Hi class and welcome to our next lesson on 10.3. We're talking about properties of logs today. We're talking about three main properties, the product property, the quotient property, and the power property. You're, this might look a little bit familiar at first. The reason for that is, is in chapter 5, we had some problems that looked like this x to the fifth times x squared. What happened with the product property? When you multiply it with common bases, you add their exponents to get x to the seventh. Very similarly, when we have x to the fifth divided by x squared, we use the quotient property, which said we subtract. So we got x cubed. So with common bases in multiplication, you add. With common bases, um, in a quotient, you subtract. So that's going to be very similar to what we're going to see in this lesson. Okay, so the product rule says this. If you have a log with a base A, okay, this right here is called the argument. So if you have an argument that's a product, you can separate them to make log base A of X plus log base A of Y. The reason for that is, is that this right here is multiplication. Multiplication. So if it's multiplying, you can separate their logs, this is called expanding it, and have this exact same base with those products added together. So an example would be this, 3x plus 1 times 2x, this is a product, it's multiplying. If it's log base 4, you can have log base 4 plus another log base 4, and just separate their products. So log base 4 of 3x plus 1 plus log base 4 of 2x. In the same way, if we have this, okay, log base 4 and log base 4, I can multiply these two. Right now it's addition, but I can multiply them as long as they have the exact same base, which they do. So it would be log base 4 of 3 times 7, which gives us 21x. So this one would be expanding it, and this one would be compressing it or making it smaller. Let's look at the quotient property. The quotient property says log base A of x divided by y. So in its quotient, I subtract. It'd be log base A of x, which is what I see right here. This division sign says I would subtract. That's why I have that negative sign, log base A of y, which is what you see right here. So putting that into practice, I have log base 4 of 7x divided by x minus 8. So I can keep my same log base 4 right here and right here and subtract the numerator, 7x, and the denominator, x minus 8. So log base 4 of 7x minus log base 4 of 8. Okay. In the exact same way, if I already have subtraction right here, I noticed it's the exact same log base. This rule doesn't apply if this was log base 4 and this was log base 3. Then that rule wouldn't apply. But if they're the exact same log base, I can simply divide 3x by 7. 3x divided by 7. And that's what we get there. Last property of the day is the quotient. I guess it's the, sorry, the power rule. So what we would be talking about here is this y right now is an exponent. If this y is an exponent, one of the rules with logs is that I could bring it out in front as a coefficient. And so that's what you see from the left side to the right side. The only difference is this y is out in front. y log base a of x. So right now this 4 is an exponent. If I were to bring it to the coefficient, the front of it, I get 4 log base 156 of 3. Okay. So then lastly, if I have the 3 as a coefficient, I can it equals the exact same thing if I bring it up here as an exponent. So log base 4 of 3x cubed is the same thing as 3 log base 4 of 3x. And then you can simplify it one more time because 3x cubed is 3x times 3x times 3x, which is 27x cubed. You might be wondering, Mr. Berge, how in the world does this help us? It help us solve more equations. We have one that looks like this, and the direction is solve. So if I have to solve, it means get x all by itself. So I see log base 5 and log base 5. Okay, This is going to be very significant. If I see a subtraction sign in between this two, when I see subtractions, I know that I could use the quotient rule. 
So the quotient would mean log base 5, and I'm going to divide their arguments. So this 2x would go in the numerator, log base 5 of 2x divided by x minus 3. Okay, I could do that because this is log base 5, and this is log base 5, so I simply divide their arguments. Okay, that equals the log base 5 of 4. So I have to continue solving. If you notice this one, the property of equality that we learned yesterday says if this is log base 5 and this is log base 5, I could simply set their arguments equal to each other. So this equals this. 2x divided by x minus 3 equals 4. Once again, the only reason why I could do this is because they have the exact same log base. If this was log base 5 and this was log base 3, I would be stuck. But because they're both log base 5s, I could continue going. i got to solve for x here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. So I have 4 times the quantity x minus 3. And I have 2x times 1. So my answer is 4x minus 12 equals 2x. Subtract 2x, add 12, 2x equals 12, so I get the answer x equals a positive 6. With any equation, I can always check my work. I'm going to show you how to do that coming up here later on in this video. Um, so eventually you'll be able to check every single one of these after I teach you how to do that. For right now, x equals 6. Why don't you guys try number letter B all by yourselves? It's very similar to how we did letter A. So pause the video, please. All right, hopefully you saw log base 3 and log base 3 with a subtraction sign. So I can take log base 3 of x divided by x minus 2 using the quotient rule. That equals the log base 3 of 2. So now I have log base 3 and log base 3, so I could set their arguments equal to each other, which is x divided by x minus 2. That is equal to 2 divided by 1. Cross multiply. Here I'm going to get 2x minus 4 after I distribute. Here I get x, so I get x to equal a positive 4. And there's my answer for letter B, x equals 4. Letter C is similar, but we're dealing with a different rule. Be very, very careful on what you're looking at. You're now looking at an addition sign. Log base 6, log base 6. This tells me that with the quotient property, when I have adding here, I can multiply their arguments, as long as I have the same log base. Log base 6 of 2x minus 7 multiplied by the number 9. That equals the log base 6 of 1. Now, as was true of the last two, both of these are log base 6's. So 2x minus 7 equals 1. Oh, sorry. 9 times the quantity, 2x minus 7. So I have to distribute first. And I get 18x minus 63. That equals 1. So now I have 18x equals 64 when I add 63 to both sides. And then I divide both sides by 18. And I get x to equal 64 eighteenths, which is the same thing as 32 ninths. My answer to this one, 32 over 9. Why don't you guys try the next one all by yourselves? Pause the video. Very similar to the last one, we're going to use the power rule, because that's an addition sign with the same log base, log base 4 and log base 4. So I have that exact same log base 4, and then I'm going to multiply x times x minus 4, multiplying their arguments together. That equals the log base 4 of 12. Continuing, log base 4 and log base 4, I'm going to set the left side argument equal to the right side argument. So I get x squared minus 4x equals 12. All right, we're going back to chapter 6. I have a quadratic here because I have an x squared term and an x term. So the way I solve for these is I factor. 
I'm going to subtract the 12 over to get a 0. And then I go, hiya, 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 hiya. And I get x times x and a minus 6 times a positive 2. That equals 0. So I get two values for x. x equals a positive 6 and x equals a negative 2. I said in the last video, be very careful if you ever get a negative answer because you can never take a you can never take a log with a negative base, nor can you have the log base of a negative number. So go back up to the top, log base 4 of a negative 2, that cannot happen. In the same way, log base 4 of a negative 2 minus 4, if this was a negative 2, that would give this a negative 6, and you can't take the log base 4 of a negative 6. It's undefined. So this right here, my friends, is an extraneous solution. I only have one answer in x equals 6. So be very careful when you get a negative answer. As you can see, if I were to put 6 back in here, first of all, a log base 4 of 6, there's nothing wrong with that, and a log base 4 of 6 minus 4, 6 minus 4 is 2. So you would still be taking the log base of a positive number, which is OK to do. It just cannot be negative. So x equals 6 is our only answer. OK, letter F. We're going to combine two rules in this one. Oh, never mind. It's just one. Sorry about that, class. What we have here, hopefully this 2 looks a little bit fishy to you. This 2 right now is a coefficient. So if this is a coefficient, did I spell that right? Something like that. If it's a coefficient, I can bring this up here as an exponent using the power rule. So I have a log with a base 2 of x plus 1, and that number I'm going to square, raised to the second power. That equals the log base 2 of a negative x plus 5. Okay, now I have log base 2 and log base 2, so I could simply set their arguments equal to each other. So now I'm going to have x plus 1 quantity squared, that's this part, x plus 1 quantity squared, that's going to equal a negative x plus 5. And now we simply solve. So I'm going to square this binomial. So when I square a binomial, I take it by itself, x plus 1 times x plus 1. So that's going to equal x squared plus 2x plus 1 when I FOIL. That equals a negative x plus 5. So I will add this x to here and subtract this 5 over here. And I get x squared plus 3x minus 4 equaling 0. All right, we're going to factor just like we did on the last one. x times x, positive 4, and a negative 1. So what are my solutions? x equals a negative 4, x equals a positive 1. Now let's be careful, let's make sure that neither of these are extraneous solutions. So we're going to go back up to the top and check. What happens if I have a negative 4? I would take the log base 2 of a negative 4 plus 1. What's a negative 4 plus 1? A negative 3. And I can't take the log base 2 of a negative number, it's impossible, it's undefined. So this sucker is extraneous. 1 I don't think should be a problem, because if I had 1 plus 1, I get 2. And over here, if I had a negative 1 plus 5, I get a positive 4. So my answer is just this value of x equals 1. OK, letter F. This is the one that's going to be using two different properties. So as you can see, I have a coefficient here again. This coefficient says I can move it up to an exponent. Now I have a log base 3 and a log base 3 with a subtraction sign right here. That subtraction sign says that I could use the quotient property. So I'm going to have the log base 3 of 4x raised to the second power because of that coefficient. This subtraction sign says divide by this argument, which is x. 
So a log base 3 of 4x, this should be quantity squared, divided by x. That equals a log base 3 of 8. Okay, now we have log base 3, log base 3. So I'm going to have 4x squared, and 4x squared is the same thing as 16x squared divided by x. That equals 8. So now, I'm first going to simplify this, if everyone's okay with that, because x squared divided by x is just x to the first. So now I have 16x equals 8. And then we have one final step. We divide both sides by 16. So 8 over 16, x equals 1 half. And this is my answer for problem letter F. All right, turning the page over, G, H, I, and J become slightly more difficult. So let's all try letter G together, and then letter H, you're going to try on your own. Okay, so I have something weird on my smart board. Okay, I don't, know what I don't know why this 2 is in the background, but pretend it's not even there. So what I'm going to have here is I have log base g, and I have log base g with the subtraction sign in between the two. So this tells me that I could use the quotient property. Now, I also see that this 5 is a coefficient, so I'm going to move it here to make it an exponent. So I'm still going to have the log with the base g of 3x minus 2 goes in the numerator. And then in the denominator, it's going to go 2 raised to the fifth power, because that 5 goes up as an exponent. That equals the log base g of the quantity x divided by 4 square root 2. Oh, that's where that 2 is coming from, yes? This 2 in the background here, sorry class, should have been right here. So now this 2 is going to come up here, as an exponent, so it's going to be that number squared. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. What I did here was the quotient property, power property, power property. So now that I have log base g here, log base g here, let's set their arguments equal to each other. Remember, this is called the argument. It's a log base of the argument. This is the argument right here. So I'm going to have 3 x divided by 2 over 2 to the 5th, and 2 raised to the 5th power is the number 32. That equals x divided by 4 square root 2 squared. Let's do that on the side right here. So it's x divided by 4 square root 2 times x over 4 square root 2. That gives x times x is x squared in the numerator. 4 times 4 is 16, and square root 2 times square root 2 is 2. So I get x squared over 32. I hope everyone followed that. When I square this, my result is x squared divided by 32. And now I'm going to solve. Well, I already have common denominators, so I could simply solve their numerators. I have 3x minus 2 equals x squared. Now I'm going to have a 0 on the right side when I subtract 3x and when I add 2. And now I'm going to factor x times x minus 2 and a minus 1. So x is going to equal a positive 2 and x is going to equal a positive 1. Those are my two answers for this particular problem. And they both check if you put them back into your first equation back up at the top. You guys try letter h by yourselves. So after you try it, this is a sum right here, this sign right here is the sum, which means I could use the product rule, which says log base 7, log base 7, I'm going to multiply a negative 8x plus 2 times 
This one half is going to be an exponent, so multiplied by 4 raised to the 1 half. That equals this exponent, sorry, this coefficient is going to become an exponent, so it's going to be log base 7 of x minus 4, that quantity squared. Okay, so I have the power rule with that sum. I multiply this times 4 raised to the 1 half and equal it times x minus 4 squared. That's what I did in this red line. So now I have log base 7, log base 7. So I can simply solve their arguments. A negative 8x plus 2 times 4 raised to the 1 half. That's the same thing as the square root of 4, which is the number 2. That equals x minus 4 times x minus 4, or x minus 4 quantity squared. Now let's distribute and FOIL and then solve. Distribute to get negative 16x plus 4. That equals, now we're going to factor, x squared minus 8x plus 16. Let's move everything off to the right. Add 16x. That's going to give us a positive x squared with a positive 8x. Subtract 4. So adding 12. That equals 0. x, x, plus 6, plus 2. That equals 0. So I finish up. x equals a negative 6. x equals a negative 2. I always get a little suspicious when I get negative answers. Let's hop back up to the top. Is, is at any time am I taking the log base of a negative number? Well, we go to this first one. What was my answer? Negative 6. So if I put a negative 6 in here, what's a negative 8 times a negative 6? Positive 48 plus 2. Okay, I'm taking a log base 7 of a positive number, so I'm good there. How about right here? It's a negative 6. Okay, a negative 6 minus 4 is a negative 10. Uh-oh, I get a log base 7 of a negative 10, which cannot happen. So I know my negative 6 is undefined. Let's try my negative 2. Once again, if I put negative 2 in right here, what happens? I get a log base 7 of a negative number. It's a negative 6. So that cannot happen. So my answer for this one is no solution. There is no such number for x that I could substitute in that would make this statement true. Okay? So this one is no solution. Two left. This one tricks up almost every single person in this class. So be careful. You have a sum. Okay? Log base 4 and log base 4. This says you can use the product rule. So let's use it. The log base 4 of x multiplied by x minus 6. That equals 2. Now here's what some people want to do. And that is set this, set the left side right here, equal to the right side. And you cannot. You're breaking rules. The reason for that is, is because there is no log base 4 off on the right. If it was log base 4 and log base 4, then yes, you can set this equal to this. However, it doesn't say log base 4, does it? So right here, I, my students oftentimes say they're stuck. And when I say, when you are stuck, you need to change the form that you're in. Right now, you're in logarithmic. So if you want to change the form, you have to change it to exponential. So exponential would say this, the base, raised to the number on the right, which is the second power, equals the argument, which is x times the quantity x minus 6. Now you are unstuck. So this is the way that you solve this one and the next one. 4 squared is 16. That equals x squared minus 6x. If you subtract 16 to get it over here, now you have a 0 on the left side. 
And now we're going to factor. X times X, negative 8 times a positive 2. Finishing up, X equals a positive 8, X equals a negative 2. Let's see if these work. A negative 2, especially log base 4 of a negative 2. Nope, can't work. So my only answer here is the positive 8. Negative 2 is extraneous. Whew, last one. You guys try this one on your own. Let, let me see how you came out. So we have log base 2, log base 2 with a subtraction sign. That would say that you can use the quotient rule. So the log base 2 of 4x divided by x minus 4. That equals 3. So now you're going to say, I need to change this into exponential form. So my base of 2 raised to the third power, so 2 cubed equals 4x divided by x minus 4. So lastly, solving this, I have an 8. That equals 4x divided by x minus 4. Cross multiply. So I have 8x minus 32 equals 4x. And I am going to subtract 4x and add 32. So 4x equals a positive 32. Divide both sides by 4. And x equals 32 divided by 4, which is 8. So it might seem kind of confusing at first, but the more problems we do, hopefully the easier and easier and easier it got. We have several more problems to do on a homework assignment when you get to class tomorrow. Page 544, 21 through 54. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions on those when you get to class tomorrow.